Okay, so uh, so today we'll be discussing about uh, chapter six of the Mastering Shining book, which is about uh, layout uh, teams and HTML. So the, for the learning objective uh, for this chapter is that uh, we are, we we are going to be we are going to be learning how to create raw HTML using uh using R. So just like uh, our default uh, shiny app in which we are creating, you know, we'll be using the flute page and under the hood, uh, this uh, flute page uh, function is going to is going to just draw the default uh, HTML in which we are going to see in our front end of our user interface of the shiny app. So we are going to also see, learn out how we are going to style uh, the, the user interface uh, uh, of the Shani app using this uh, good, uh, cool package called the, the BSLib, which we are going to see how we can use it to style uh, the user interface. So we are also going to learn how we can also create uh, a uh, multi-page uh, shiny app, okay, using the top set panel to create a uh, different uh, multi-page for the user interface uh, uh, as as we, so that is uh, basically what uh, we are going to learn in this chapter. So the first chapter I just started uh, uh, with a library where we can initialize the app. So here they were discussing the single page layout of a shiny app where they have a single app where we the initialize uh, uh, where they use uh, the flute page. Okay, the flute page uh, function which is just going to, this is raw HTML. And within this raw HTML, we have the title panel. And what is the title panel doing? In the app, it's just, in, it's just presenting the title in the app, which is a hello shiny, where in our own case, maybe we are de developing this app for other purposes. So we can just put the title there. Then the sidebar within the sidebar uh, layout. So within the sidebar layout, we can pass in inputs, uh, slider inputs, the, the sidebar panel inputs, the input ID is observed, the level is observation, the minimum value is zero, the maximum value is 1000, and the default value when we start this up is going to be 500. So the main panel, the main panel is where we can pass in our output. So what we want the user to see, where they have a this plot, okay? They, they have a default plot, which is a this plot. So here they said uh, we should really focus on the hierarchy, hierarchy uh, of the, of the call function because looking at the hierarchy, we are first of all going to start uh, with flute page. So what is flute page doing? Flute page is just uh, is just creating uh, this default default HTML. Is the default HTML that is the 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 front end where the user is seeing. So this this is the function that creates that default page. Then we have the title panel where we are going to put the title uh, to our app in which we, we are trying to create. So the sidebar layouts, which is always going to be at the side of the app, then we put pass in all our inputs. It can be a select input, it can be a uh, slider input, then the main panel where we are going to pass in the outputs, what we want the user uh, to see in the application. So I think uh, more, uh, more, uh, they said we should, for us to learn more about uh, about the the design guide that we should look at the application uh, application layout guide uh, to learn more about how we can 
style the, the UI. So the, for the page function that they, they were looking at was a flute page. So once we once we use that flute page function, so it set up all the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that Shiny needs. So we can see that once we use it, it's just we are just going to see this uh, default uh, background. So this under the hood is just doing is just defining this default HTML. We will also use CSS and also JavaScript uh, the, that Shiny uses uh, under the hood. So for the flute page, we can have several other version of the flute page. We can have the fixed page, okay? So I think uh, the fixed page will make sure that both the, the height and width, uh, maybe when we are using a mobile view to view this, it's going to be fixed. It's going to take that uh, default size of our model. We can also have the field page. We can also have a fixed page and also the flute page. So these are all uh, defaults. I think all each of these defaults, they have uh, they have their own pros. They also have uh, their, their own cons. Okay, so for the, for the next section, we'll be looking at the page with sidebar. Okay, so which is what I've already explained. So we have a flute page, which is going to define the raw HTML, CSS and JavaScript uh, under the hood wash. That is what Shani uses. So we have the title panel where we can pass in the app title description. So we have the sidebar layout, sidebar panel. So here we pass in all our inputs. Within the main panel, we pass in all our outputs here into in the main panel. So just this is the default app. So we have the flute page function, which define the uh the, the raw HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, that Shani uses under the hood. Uh, we have the title panel. We have the sidebar layer where we can pass in all our inputs, like the slide bar input, select inputs. Then we have the main panel where we can fix our outputs, what we want uh, the user uh, to see. I don't know if there are any questions up to now before we proceed. Okay, so if there is none, okay. Okay, Shani dashboard gets that. Yep, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, uh, not, maybe right, not right now, but I, I'm a little confused. Uh, there seem to be at least two different ways to do it. And um, um, just curious what people's opinions are of the two layouts. That's all. Okay, which of the layouts is it the field page or fixed page? Which one? Hello, Jim. If you can throw more lights. Sorry. Uh, so, um, if you click on that link, you will see um, some code that's used in uh, the the shiny dashboard package, and it's just an alternative way alternative way to to set up um, a menu in the left and uh, content on the right and they're both from our studio yep. yeah this is very useful maybe you want to create like a dashboard yes okay yes so if you want to create like a dashboard uh, yes. You can use either the shiny dashboard. I think there is also a flex dashboard, which we can use to create dashboard uh, for shiny. But uh, we can also do this with the shiny uh, package. We can also do this with the shiny package where we can have we can have the flood rule. Okay, so within the flood rule, we can also achieve this same dashboard. Uh, with the shiny, which is part of what we'll discuss on today. Okay, yeah, okay, all right, thanks. Okay, so I think uh, I was somewhere here, page with sidebar, okay. So I think I've explained this, so this is what we are going to have, okay. So we go over here, so I think this, I'll just try to explain the code, so they have, here they have the UI, 
We have the flute, they, we, we, they use, make use of the flute page. Yeah, they pass in the title of the page, which is central uh, limit theorem. So they have the sidebar layouts, then the sidebar panel. So then they pass in the input, which is numeric inputs. Input ID is M, the label is number of sample. Uh, the default value is two, minimum is one, and maximum is 100. Then in the main panel, they pass in the plots, the output, which is the plot outputs. They have hist, then the server, which is a function of input, output, and session. Okay, so they need to call this hist in the output. So the output dollar sign hist uh, interface. So we are using the render plot. So we have means, uh, replicates, uh, I think 10, 10,000, which is, will be main run if inputs dollar sign M. Okay. So here is where we call the histogram for the means. The break number of break is uh, 20. Then resolution of the plot, plot was set uh, to 96. So, so this is uh, this is the app. So let's see, let's see this app in our studio. So let me create a script. Yeah. Okay. So we have library shiny. This is a UI. This is a server. We have shiny app. We have UI. We have server. Yep. So, so yeah. So the since the default value is set to two, we can change this value. We can add. We can add. So each time we add, so our plot is going to be updated when there is a new value. The plot is just going to update. Yep. Can put to ten. So we can keep on increasing the sample size. So it's just going to update the plot. So I'll stop this. Yep, so go back to my presentation. So this is a default app. So now, uh, now we are having the multi row. So I think this, this is also one approach in which uh, uh, based on what uh, you were trying to show you in the shiny dashboard, where we can have a dashboard where we can have uh, different type of plots in. So this is one example we can achieve that. We can also do a multi row where we can have in one, uh, in one in the default layout we can have, we can just insert like four plots. So, so under the hood, they were saying that the sidebar layout is built on top of a flexible multi row layout, which can use directly to create more visually complex apps. As usual, you start with a flute page, then you create flute row and columns with columns. The following template generate the structure in figure 6.4. Here we started with flute page, okay? Then within the flute page, we have the flute row function where we can specify the column. Here they say column is four. Then we can have our, uh, our outputs here which is either input or output, we can specify it here within this dot, dot, dot. Then we have another column here is gonna be eight. We can also specify our outputs here. Then they have another flute row. Here we have columns to be six. We can also specify our, our outputs here. Then we also have another column to be six. We can also specify uh, our outputs here. So once we do that, so let's see how we can achieve this in R. Pick this code. So I will replace it with this. Okay, so I'll replace it with this. I'll remove all these objects from my environment. Okay. Uh, 
kolom uh, uh, I can say plot plot outputs. Jim, are you still with us? So, so we can say that this is his. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay, so so I can change this column. Let's. I want to use the same column width for all the plots. Let this be east. So I can paste this here. Here I say plot outputs. Here I should put box box plots. Okay. Here I can say plot outputs. Density plot, density plot, okay. Plot output, so I can put violin plot here. Okay, so that is for the UI, okay. That is, what am I missing? Oops, okay, this is the UI. I need to save it at the assign it to the UI. So now I need to define the server. It should be function of inputs, outputs, uh, here we have outputs dollar sign hist, which will be render, render plot, reactive, uh, reactive, we have GG. So I think I need to load my package up library, GG plot two, up, GG plot, so data is iris, aesthetics. Uh, so X, I think this is a uh, histogram. X uh, is equals to sepa dot plus geom underscore his histogram. So we are true with that. I can copy this. Paste here. So the second output is box plot, okay? So here, it's gonna be box plot. Okay. X, so this will be Y. Yeah, we x is equals to separ species. So here will be field is equals to species. So your your box box plots uh, up. So the next, I think it's density plots. Okay. Yep, so it's like someone has a question. Yes, uh, 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 sorry to interrupt. Uh, how many rows, how many fluid rows did you set up? I Fl set up uh, two fluid rows. Uh, so uh, one, one fluid row is going to have two plots. Another fluid row is going to have two plots. So in total, okay. we are going to have Four plots. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Good. So the next, I think the next is uh, density plots. Up. Density plots. Uh, Olowo Femi. Uh, yes. You need to add the geom in the box plot. Geom box plot. You said. Yeah, I, I think you have to add the geom. Is there? Is there? Is there? Is there? Is there? 
Yes, I want to edit the third plot now. The there is there. This is it. Line three, 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 thirty-three. Okay. So this one is a density plot. Density. John density. Yep. So I just need to edit this. Uh, yep. John density is there. The last one is violin plot. Uh, correct this density. This will be uh, violin. Okay. So I can, where is that box plot? Let me use this. Violin. So let's start. Yeah. Okay. Oh, could not find function. Violin. Yep. So. Maybe I missed something here. Uh, geom. Geom. Geom on the score violin. Yep. Yep. And in the box plot, I think you are going to have the same problem. Let's see. Yep. X is missing no default. So where do we have that? Yes, I think I missed something. Yeah, in the box plot, uh, you're missing the geom. Yes, the yes, geom yes, yes. <laughs> yep. There you go. So, something is still missing. Uh, the violin, something is still missing in the violin. No, violin is the density plot. The density plot, yeah. Something is still missing there. Geomondas for density. Oh, what is missing? Data here is separate. Let's see the, what's, oh, it's density plots. So, yep, so I think everything is set now. Yep, so we can see the four plots. Nice. So nice. Um, we can, this approach, we can do this approach using tab set panel, whereby this tab set, the first tab set panel, we can have these four plots we have another tab set, we can also display another four plots. We have another tab set, we can also display another four plots. And we can see the height and width of all these plots, they are all are fixed, they are all the same. So we can do this, use the same approach. Uh, we can also, we can use the same approach just as what we saw in the flex dashboard. But the flex dashboard uh, in which all shiny dashboard that you shared on the channel is that one I think is very easy for us to build uh, for us to have this same um, plot at once it's very easy so and one thing is that we can also add the the slider inputs or the side add the sidebar panel whereby the user can just interact uh, with these plots directly using different slider they can say they want to select this so we can add that same syntax. We can add it uh, to this plot now to so our, our users as they are working. Uh, they, are, they can easily interact uh, with the plots. So I think I will stop this and go back to the presentation. So that is how we can achieve uh, the multi-role.
So the multi row we just start with this float page. There we go. Oh, under we have float row where we can specify the column. So, but for me, the default uh, column width, I use six, 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 six all through so that uh, all the plots, they will have this the frame width and height as I render them. So, so this is this is what is going on under the roof. We have the flute page, which will define the default HTML, CSS and JavaScript uh, for Shiny. Then we have the flute row. Within the flute row function, we specify the column. So here, the, the one they did here, it was four. And here we have eight. For the next flute row, we have column six. And also we have uh, column six. So this is just going to create uh, the default app. So I think there were some exercises that said read the documentation of the sidebar layout to determine the width in column. So for fluid row and column, what are you missing? So we can also modify the central limit storing app to put the sidebar on the right instead, instead of the left. I think I was trying, I tried to look at this. I don't know if I still have uh, the solution. I think I have something here. Library shiny. Even so, like for the fruit row. Okay, so for this, I think uh, how I was column control shift uh, one. Okay. So, so for us to achieve that, so once we have defined the UI, okay, so how I was able to achieve that, I just have to put position is equals within quotes right. So once I put this position, it, it was right because that by default, this sidebar panel, okay, the, the input in which we are passing in is going to appear in the left. So, but if you want to switch this so that the inputs will appear in the right, we just need to pass in and after the plot outputs, we pass in a new argument that the position equals right. So once you pass in that position, we actually want uh, to show the position in the right. So that is when Shani will now put that slider in the right uh, position of the app. So, Okay, so this talk about uh, the multi-page uh, layout for the shiny app. So, so as uh, and here we'll be looking at a new function which is the tab panel. So the tab panel uh, with within the, uh, within the tab sets. So we can have various tabs. So on each of these tab, uh, we can have one tab where we want to show maybe like. Uh, uh, we want to show different type of plot outputs. We can be like a summary. It can be table for each tab. So each tab we can have different uh, functionality in which we want to put uh, in a, in our in our apps. So here they will, they use a default loop page. They have the tab set panel. We have tab one, which will be import data. We have we also have file inputs input ID file. Label is data, button label, upload. Here they have text inputs. They also have numeric inputs. We have numeric inputs. They have tabs panel, set parameters, tab panel, visualize our uh, results. So we can see this, that we can have import data, set parameters, visualize results. And each of these tabs, they are appearing in a horizontal position. But uh, I think they discussed that uh, one drawback of, of this approach is that uh, there is a limit to the number total number of tabs in which we can show, okay? In which we can, uh, in which we, we can show in our final outputs. There is a drawback in which uh, we can show the number of tabs in which we can present in our user interface. But as we progress uh, in this discussion, we'll see alternative approach where we can use uh, 
to solve this. So here they have top set panel, blue page. We have slider sidebar layout, side sidebar panel. We have text output, which is a panel. So we can have a uh, different, here we can have the main panel with the top set panel, ID, top set, top panel, panel one, one, top panel, panel two, two. So here we can, can We can put use this code of app, which the user is selecting at a particular time. We can want maybe want to know which of the various tab in which the user. So we can just reference that in the server input dollar sign tab sets. So once the user is working with the app, we can know which of the tab in which he or she is selecting uh, at a given at a particular time. So for us to uh, overcome uh, that problem whereby uh, the, the text, because we have a limit to the number of tabs in which we can show in the user interface. So here we can use, overcome that using the nav bar list and nav bars, okay? Which is going to show it either that rather than horizontal position is going to take uh, the vertical position just like a just like a drop down menu because we can have the nav bar menu which we have we can see like a accordion drop down which will show different types of outputs so we can overcome that using this nav bar list panel here we have the flute page nav bar list panel id is tab set uh heading here we have heading one we have tab panel panel one Panel one content heading two, panel one, tap panel, panel two, panel two content, tap panel, panel three, panel three contents goes here. Such that once the user is selecting panel one, we can see panel one contents. It can appear here. If we select uh, is in panel two, we can see the panel two contents appearing here. Okay, so here. This is an example using the navbar page. This one is like a navigation page where, okay, it's like somebody wants to speak. Okay. Uh, uh, just a comment. Uh, uh, when I did some practice uh, things with this, the coding becomes impossible because the um, all the panels are similarly numbered, and I, I it just became a, a mess for, for me to keep track of things to get it right. Uh, um, so yes, it works, but uh, I, I I don't like this approach. <laughs> Nothing to do. I just it, uh, okay. That's all. That's all. Yeah, yeah. I get you. I get you because. Uh, if you make one error, you need to go back all over again to see where you really make that error. Maybe you want to, uh, it becomes very intensive because you need to code all these tabs and you need to specify them correctly. If not, uh, it might not appear, work the way you want it uh, to work. I think I have done this before when I presented uh, this chapter. So like now we can just click on panel one. So when you click on panel one, you can display, see all the outputs for panel one. You can click on panel two, it will display all the outputs. If you want to display all the output, just like a, a multi row that I used before, where you have four plots, it's still possible. You can show all the four plots in panel one, show all the four plots in panel two, show all the four plots in panel three, and also the sub panel. Remember that the sub panel is not by menu. It's a menu that have different lists of tab sets. Because this one is a not by menu. We have how many tab sets? We have three tab sets in just this sub panel. This sub panel is going to have three tab sets. So I think this is very, very useful because we can have a drop down of different uh, tab sets that we want to see in our UI. Then we now 
make sure we specify the outputs in each of those tab sets. So once we click it, so we can see the result up here, we click this, we can see the result up here. We click this other tab set, it's also, it's also going to, uh, to display uh, the results. Uh, just as Jim said, I think uh, at times, uh, at times, because when I first work on this, uh, at times I'll, I'll make one error once I run it, it's always giving me an error, so I need to go back and look at the structure, how I arrange uh, the code again before I'll be able to fix it, then the code is going to, uh, is going to work. Okay, so I think the, this other part talks about the bootstrap. Because if you were the book tell us that if you want to be very, very uh, uh, productive in the type of app in which we are building, that we should spend more time in the styling of the app because we each organization that we are building up for, they might have uh, their own templates. So we need to spend more time to style this app to improve the look of the app. So, and there is this very good package called uh, the BS Lib. So this BS Lib uh, package is going to help us to style our app with this. So we just need to call this BS underscore team function. Okay, so once we call this BS underscore team function, uh, we can pass in different argument, the background color, uh, the, the foreground color, the primary, the secondary. We can also use the this default bush wash team uh, to style the app. So for the team argument, so we just need to use a uh, BS, BS underscore team function, and we pass in all our arguments will go in here yeah. but we can also use the default boost wash team so we can specify darkly so once we use that uh it's going to it's going to build it's going to build uh the app using a dark uh the default dark team uh bush wash team for the user interface then we, but we can also preview we can also preview that team here. We set a default team. Okay, the background color is this. The foreground color is white. The base font is Source Sans Pro. Okay, so we can also preview this team in our studio. Let's see that in action. Go back to our studio. Okay. BS underscore team. Library BS Lib BS underscore team underscore preview team is team. Okay, so once we run this, it's just going to fire up a shiny app. It's going to fire up a shiny app. It's going to fire up a shiny app. Why is it taking time? Okay. So it's just going to fire up a shiny app uh, where we can now, we can now interact with the app. Preset team is bootstrap, bootstrap option. So we can, we can select. So once we are selecting any input, uh, the app is going to refresh. The app is going to refresh based on the inputs in which we selected. Okay. So this is the default background color we select. So, but we can or uh, we can select a different color. We can say, let it be this. Okay, so the app is going to update. And as it's updating, there is updating the code. Okay, so we can check this, the fonts. We can pick Source Sans Pro. We can see that that is a default fonts. So if we are true with the customization, we can just stop the app. 
So once we stop the app, we can see that this is the updated code. BS, BS, we can see the updated code here. BS team updates, team, okay, background, font scale. So we can now copy this and now put it in our script that we are using. So that is now going to have uh, the updated code, which is going to update this default team uh, in which uh, we set. But also when we are using the BSLib package, uh, at times we create different uh, visualization. So if we want our visualization to go with our default team in which we have specified, we can use this thematic package. So we, ju we just need to call just one line of code in the server, thematic, thematic for shiny, and this is gonna be ensure that all our plots is going to use our default team, our default team in which uh, we have slip package. So it's just going to use uh, that default team in all plots in the final page. So yeah, this was an exercise that we should use the BS team with you to make the ugliest team we can. But though I do not do that, so it's just still going to be uh, the same output approach where we start using the review function to review all the in-built team is for us to just play around with that function, uh, try different uh, approach. So we now copy that code and paste that this is the final code uh, for the team in which I created. So here they say under the hood, Shiny is designed so that our user can, you don't need to learn about the details of HTML, however, if we know more about HTML and CSS, so it's going to make it very easy uh, for us uh, to for us to style and design uh, the user interface of our Shiny app. So we are going to make a more outstanding design, a more outstanding user interface uh, for as our user is interacting the app with the app. So if we know a, a little knowledge about this programming language, so. And for us to work with the HTML, so we need to also look at the HTML tools package. It's also a very good uh, package if you want to really add a, a lot of HTML components in the user interface uh, of our Shiny app. So we can see a default example here where the, they have the UI loop page. They saw them to use the default Shiny code. They are writing raw HTML code. They are writing raw HTML code here, okay? Which is a P class, my class, this is some text, okay? This is a closing tag. This is was the opening tag, so they use, they were all writing raw HTML code here. Instead of them to write the default R code, we are used to, they were writing raw HTML code here. So we can do the same thing within Shiny, and it's still, it's still going to work. This is a raw HTML code header one. This is uh, this is a heading. This is a paragraph. This is some text. Class my class. This is tag UI tag L first bullet second bullet. So we can see that we can write our raw uh, HTML code, and Shiny is still going to understand how to render this code uh, uh, in the in the final output. So, but they do advise that if you want to learn more on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to make a compelling user interface, they do recommend this book, Outstanding User Interface uh, with Shiny, okay? So in this book, we are, we are going to cover all these uh, three components uh, of, a, of the Shiny app to on how to use the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, to customize uh, the user interface of the Shiny app. I don't know if there are any questions because that is the summary. This we have seen how we can use flood page, how we can use uh, the tab set panel, and how we can also use the navbar menu and also navbar lists, and also how we can style uh, the user interface using Bootstrap, which with the, within the BS Sleep. Uh, library to style the user interface of our Shiny app. Yep, I think uh, that is 
all I got. I don't know if uh, there are any questions. Uh, I have a question. Um, uh, if you could go back to one of your earlier, um, where you were doing uh, box plots and histograms, um, uh, it's, my question is actually about reactive, but I hope you don't mind if I ask it. Um, just any any uh, histogram, okay. Uh, so on line twenty eight. You don't have a number of bins. Yes, right? you can specify. Right, right. The bin widths. Uh, uh, well, maybe I've got the wrong. Um, um, you know, it's histogram. Uh, there's no bins. Okay, but I guess my question is, um, why, why don't you set set the bin width to something? That doesn't matter. Just in any number let's say 10 okay yeah uh that 10 so this is you've hard coded it suppose yes. you wanted to make it uh something that the programmer not the user the, the developer could adjust so you want to make it a variable but only the programmer can tinker with it. So we make the variable, uh, um, you know, x. And er earlier in the program, the programmer sets x equal to something. Is that reactive? Do we have to make that put it in um, a reactive as a reactive value? Do, do you understand yes. what? Okay. Yes, I got you. I got you. That means what you mean is that you want it in such a way that you don't need to. You, they, you set a limit for the bin width. You go between this limit to this limit, and you don't want to. You want it in which they, as the user is interacting with the app, they can choose different. They can iterate between different bin widths. Uh, uh, that that's uh, even more complicated. No, no. Just that number 10, suppose the programmer, not the user, just wants to arbitrarily change the code and wants it to be 20. Just uh, for me, for me, what I understand is that if I have to come back to the user interface. Yes. Okay. Within yeah. the user interface, I can define set on others uh, slide input, pass in the inputs there. Specify no. the inputs for the bin. No. The number of bin. No, no. That that will allow the user. I, I I don't want the user to have any control. I want the you, the developer, you the programmer. Okay, to... okay. Uh... <laughs> So that will be like you writing your own function uh, for the number of to specify the bin width. It, uh, uh, no, no. Uh, why don't you change the ten to uh, foo? F O O. Uh, F O O. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Change it to foo. F O O. Like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And now uh, on line 25, set foo equal to 10. Yeah. Will that work? No. Mm. Like this? Yes, but uh, I think foo is with, yeah, always. Yes. Will, will that work did not work uh, you return an error you, you put you put it in uh quotation marks take out the quotation marks uh okay 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 
Right. It works. It works. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Ne uh, next time. Uh, there are times when you have would have to make foo a reactive variable, not nothing to do with the user, even if the programmer. Uh, I'll have to find that a use case, and, and next time I'll bring it up. Okay, so let me let me 